Hello, I, I'm with Ian Heptingstall, who's going to present himself, and we're going to talk about critical chain project management, uh, which will require comparing it uh, or understanding the difference with critical path uh, project management, which is the most popular, most used approach. So, uh, Ian, can you tell us a few words about yourself and what you think about the difference between critical chain and critical path? I'm Ian Heptingstall. I'm uh, from the UK. And I currently work as an academic teaching on a master's programme in project management. I'm a late career academic, joining academia after 35 years of managing projects, managing procurement, a bit of consultancy and training. So, critical chain, critical path? Crit I mean, it leads to confusion because, for instance, critical chain uh, is uh, um, two things. It's technically speaking, uh, in the critical chain approach, it's just a sequence of events that takes into account dependencies on tasks and takes into account availability of resources, mm -hmm. right? Which is pretty close to uh, critical path. Yep. But what it's completely missing out in that very succinct technical description is everything to do with buffers, which is one of the fundamental points about critical chain. Mm -hmm. And so it leads to, to, to confusion and also uh, critical chain takes into account in its calculations the availability of resources, right? and that can or cannot be done in critical path scheduling. So what's your take on, on critical path and critical chain? Well, firstly, from my perspective, neither are all about project management. They're techniques used in managing projects, but they're not a holistic project management methodology. Mm -hmm. Critical chain is a method for, for scheduling and managing execution that helps you to manage a project. Managing projects involves much more. Mm -hmm. Same applies to critical path as well. I think the conventional and the common use of the critical path method cuts many corners. Mm -hmm. And often it's simply a list of activities that need to be done and some rough dependency logic and sequencing built into it. Yeah, one of the things that, that critical chain does is it reinforces the need or the requirement to think about the resources that tasks will need at the scheduling stage. Yep. That's a corner that's often cut with people using critical path, path method. But the full critical path method always does look at resources. The idea of resource-leveled critical path schedule, you know, it's not new, that's always been there, yep. and it's always been part of the method. Yep. But often that corner was cut and the software doesn't force it upon you. Mm -hmm. So you can you can run a critical path just with the logical dependencies and, and leave out the, uh, the resources. But for me, the fundamental differences is the degree to which the methods either embrace uh, the inherent uncertainty of any estimate. Sure. Yeah, most use of even resource-loaded critical path scheduling takes a more deterministic approach to the duration, the amount of resources, uh, <clears throat> as opposed to critical chain, where the, the estimates are acknowledged to be rough and you don't build sort of too much precision into it. And when you execute, you use your schedule to identify issues as early as possible so you can intervene earlier. I think there are aspects of using critical chain that do help reduce the risk of certain execution problems arising. Mm -hmm. But also, you, don't, you can't preempt them all. Those that arise, more of them are noticed earlier when it's easier to intervene. Okay, mm. okay. So I hope uh, this has given you an interest to visit uh, Ian's teaching at his university in Birmingham on industrial project management. Thank you very much. Bye.